On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to take you through a quick 2023 holiday gift guide for homebrewers. Now don't click away. This isn't just a gift guide for you to buy stuff for other people, but it's a great opportunity for you to make some notes of things that you might want other folks to buy you. And we're going to rank these in order from beginner to intermediate to advanced level gifts, and then we'll have a couple of bonuses at the end. First up on the list, okay, this is a little bit of a conflict of interest, I guess, but Sip and Saver. This was developed in part by the Doing the Most community. We ran a Kickstarter on it and raised over $10,000 to make Sip and Saver happen. And now you can buy them on eBay. There'll be a link in the description. Sip and Saver is a vocabulary deck for home-brewed beverages. It's got words, lots and lots and lots of words to help you describe your homebrew. And as a beginner, this is a great opportunity to learn some words to describe your own homebrewed beverages so that way when you share them with folks, you can tell them exactly what it is they're about to see, smell, and taste. Check it out. If you order before the 15th of December, it should arrive in your mailbox by Christmas. Next up, Starzan and a spray bottle. Most beginners probably have some form of no rinse sanitizer on hand, and you can never have too much Starzan. I mean, I go through one of these about every single year. And pairing it with a nice little glass spray bottle shows some thoughtfulness on your part, putting that cute little package together. Next up, bottle brushes. Most homebrewers should have bottle brushes. A lot of beginners don't because they just don't see the value in investing in that just yet. But if they don't have them, they need them. And if they do have them, they're probably starting to wear out. This one is ready for retirement. You can see over time they get kind of corroded, they get rusty, stuff like your child's hair gets caught in them, and it's always great to have replacement bottle brushes. They make a wonderful gift and you can buy them in multi-packs. And lastly, for beginners, the Herculometer. Everybody needs a hydrometer for measuring the gravity at the beginning and throughout the process of and at the end of fermentation, and the Herculometer is an excellent choice. The Herculometer is a polycarbonate hydrometer, meaning that it is relatively indestructible. And as you've probably heard, hydrometers have a tendency to fall on the floor and explode into a billion pieces. Not so with the Herculometer. That landed on my microphone cable. The Herculometer is great. Every now and then they do have some flaws in them, but nothing as explosive as dropping a glass hydrometer on the ground. And they're just about the same price as a glass hydrometer, so it doesn't make any sense to me not to go with the Herculometer. Next on to intermediate gifts. First up, a honey sampler. I really like this one from Flying Bee Ranch because you can choose from quite a few different options and get honeys in little honey bears so you can taste them and kind of get an idea for what each honey varietal offers. And this is like a mix and match option where you can choose eight different options. I think that's a super cool way, especially for mead makers or people who are making braggots, to get a really good understanding of what a honey varietal can contribute. And going the extra mile, you can pour these into one quart mason jars, ferment them, and then compare meads made from all eight of these different honeys. This is a great resource for somebody who's just starting to make mead and just kind of getting into the world of honey tasting in general. In that similar vein, tasting wheels. This is a color-coded and often very wordy wheel that kind of shows you where your homebrew or other things you're tasting fall within the flavor and aroma spectrum. You can get these as small wheels, you can get them as poster size wheels, and they're a super handy gift for the intermediate who's working on balancing, kind of perfecting their homebrew craft to really get a more holistic understanding of where they are in that chart. Next up, a floor corker. Most beginners are going to start with a hand corker because a floor corker costs two to three times as much and is not really a worthwhile investment for somebody who's just kind of dabbling in homebrewing. But if you or a colleague is an intermediate brewer and looking to scale up, a nice Italian floor corker is a great gift. It makes corking a breeze. It is a little difficult sometimes to find a storage place for it, especially if you're in like a studio apartment, but it definitely makes things 
way easier on bottling day. And just a note to anyone buying me a gift this year, I don't have a floor corker yet. And lastly, for those in the intermediate realm who might have a kegging setup, a beer gun. A beer gun and other similar devices are made to bottle brews off of a keg. They allow you to purge the bottle with CO2 and then bottom fill it all the way up to the top, minimizing exposure to the outside air. It's a great way to share a brew that might already be in a keg and allows you to bottle relatively pain-free so you can make six packs for your friends and send them on their way. First up, the refractometer. It was years and years into my home brewing before I purchased a refractometer and they're not super expensive. I think this one was 25 bucks. And rather than a hydrometer, which you need to float in a sample of your brew in order to get the gravity reading, but with the refractometer, you can take a sanitized implement, dip it in your brew, put one to two drops on the refractometer, close it up and see what your gravity is. This works great when you have just mixed something up so you know exactly what the gravity is. There is some math involved if you're gonna use a refractometer the entire way through fermentation because you have to do some conversion where you don't necessarily need to do that with your hydrometer readings. However, on brew day, when you're trying to get something brewed up, maybe you're making a beer or a braggot or a mead and you really just wanna quick check the gravity, Refractometer works fantastic for that. And I have started basically only using this on brew day, not this. And another great advanced level gift is a fault tasting kit. The fault tasting kit allows you to add faults to something so you can taste what they would taste like if you ran into that fault on your own. For example, maybe you wanna know what a corked wine tastes like. You can use the fault tasting kit to dose your brew with a fault and then taste it and know what that tastes like so your brain can bookmark it for future reference. Super handy, really cool exercise to do with friends or with brewing clubs or with family. And you can always follow it up by drinking something really good at the end. For the advanced mead, wine, or cider maker, consider getting them a fruit press. My fruit press is around a five gallon volume and it cost me about $130 or so when I bought it. And you can find them in all sorts of different volumes. You can find them in wood or metal and the internet is just full of different varieties of fruit presses. I like mine, it's made from wood and metal and I've used it a number of times to press fruit. Works like a charm. And for someone like me, I, I didn't really buy it for myself until I was more in the advanced realm of homebrewing when I was working with big whole fruit meads and wines. Even before a year or two years ago, it was not really something that I was interested in investing in to only use it a few times a year. But now that I have it and I see a big fruit sale, I'm much more likely to buy a bunch of fruit and press it in my fruit press to make something from fresh fruit. This is obviously a great gift for mead, wine, and cider makers. It's also a nice couple's gift because it's really fun to do the fruit press with someone else, particularly because it can be a lot of work. Finally, on our advanced brewer gift guide, a dissolved oxygen meter. Now, just like something like a pH meter, I would recommend not cheaping out on a dissolved oxygen meter. What this tool does is it tells you how much dissolved oxygen is in your brew. And this can be really helpful as an advanced home brewer is trying to really control for oxygen exposure in their brewing process. A dissolved oxygen meter gives you a kind of fingerprint of the oxygen level in that brew. So you know if you should add some more sulfites or if your setup is doing what you had hoped it was doing in preventing oxygen exposure throughout the fermentation process. I don't personally have a DO meter, so I don't have a great recommendation for one. I would suggest going online, reading reviews, and not getting the cheapest option you can find. And if you've got a DO meter and you've got recommendations, please drop those in the comments. I'm sure it would be very helpful for folks who are looking to buy one of these for the advanced home brewer in their family. And a couple of bonus items, I want to throw in a plug for Pinter. This is not a paid endorsement. I was just able to use one of their systems whenever they were running their Kickstarter for the Pinter 3. It is launching in the USA, I think now. And so it's a great opportunity to get one of these. I think that it's kind of great for any level of home brewer, especially if you're just following along with the packs that they include with the Pinter. But it gives you a good initial introduction to pressure fermenting 
and because it's an all-in-one unit that you ferment in and serve from, it's a really kind of low muss, low fuss way of doing pressure fermentation and serving on small batches. I actually thought it was really cool. I was pretty impressed by the technology and the engineering behind it. And so I would recommend picking one up if none of the other stuff on this list is interesting to you or to the person that you're buying for. The Pinter is a fun little toy. And lastly, no home brewer can have enough glassware. These are some cool glasses that Anna got me from the first Americans Museum, and they've just got this cool print on them. I have a ton of glassware, but still, when I'm at a store or a thrift shop, I'm always kind of going through the glassware section to see if there's anything else cool that I can serve from, that I can take thumbnail pictures from. And it's kind of fun to just have a diverse set of glassware so you've always got a glass for the serving occasion. Like I said, at a thrift shop, this could be a relatively cheap little stocking stuffer type gift. I hope this list was helpful if you're looking for stuff for yourself or if you're looking for something to buy for a loved one. If you've got other great ideas that fall within these categories, drop them in the comments. If folks are watching this video, I'm sure that they are excited to jump down into the comments and see if there are any other creative ideas for stuff that they can buy for themselves or a family member. Until next time, friends, it's the holiday season, my favorite time of year. Happy brewing and stay well. Moment brews and various artists, everything from me to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most.